you know, again, we can point to all these really obvious enti- these entities that are obviously responsible for uh, car- you know excess carbon emissions and things like this. But really, like maintaining the infrastructure of the U.S. empire. I mean, I vaguely remember one time like the Pentagon was trying to do some audit or something about like really trying to get a scale of like what is the U.S. in you know infrastructurally like where is all of the mm-hmm. stockpiles of weapons? Where are the military bases where are we you know landing strips you know i mean like what is the true like scope of this and they even had a hard time (laughs) quantifying it but if you could try to quantify it i mean it's almost an impossible task but like just to give us like a scale because i mean we've all i think a lot of us have seen those maps of like all the little dots around the world of like Mm -hmm. u.s military bases but i don't even think that gives us a real scale or scope of it it doesn't and this is i think this has been the albatross of in the undertaking of a movie of this scale because like Mm -hmm. it it actually like matches the difficulties of making a movie like this because it is so ubiquitous and it is so abstract when you're looking at how do you actually quantify the impact and the reach of the u.s military because i mean it's so many levels patrick and if you're just looking at like just carbon emissions i mean let's just start there because i think that was the impetus for a lot of this in in terms of my profound climate anxiety Mm -hmm. having Mm -hmm. a child and then coupling that with my decades long just activist background of fighting militarism and all that coalescing and then like looking at the fact that let's just say um you know, climate emissions and 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 when you're mm. looking at the military is exempt from all of these treaties and that the military actually made it so that no country's military has to register any of the emissions in any of these, you know, conference of parties that mm-hmm. happen every year. And it's just this huge farce. And so there are scholars and academic studies and institutions that actually do try to take this data um, and, and extrapolate it out in terms of, you know, like if you just look at the military zone data of their oil purchases, because they don't, they don't quantify or catalog their actual emissions at all. This has to be done by outside mm-hmm. groups that just take the, the sheer data of how much oil they purchase. Mm-hmm. And when you just look at that number, <laughs> that makes the U.S. military institutionally the largest polluting force in the world by the military's own data. And then you just extrapolate more and more and more, Patrick, and it gets so massive yeah. that, I mean, let's just go through that. If you don't mind, like I, there's yeah, yeah. so much to unpack here and, and sure. this is like, it's so big. I mean, like you said, you look at these maps and you see, you know, dots speckled all around the world uh, mm-hmm. and that's how far reaching these bases are. I mean, we're talking about a thousand bases lily pad bases that we don't even we can't even account for i mean cia outposts all of these things that aren't even registered necessarily Mm -hmm. as like u.s military installations that's just one facet of it um i think that when you're just looking at um why are the emissions so high and you look at just the sheer amount of vehicles and aircraft and and starting there i think is just really extreme because we hear these statistics all the time that the u.s military is like bigger than the next 10 countries combined, or we spend more on the military than the next 10 countries combined. But like, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's a behemoth of air power. It is so outrageously massive compared to even, you know, China and Russia and all of the countries below that. Like, I mean, jet fuel alone, bunker fuel alone, these are very, very dirty fuels. Mm -hmm. Um, Bunker fuels, when you're looking at our aircraft, I'm sorry, our naval fleet, That isn't even counted because a lot of this fuel is basically accumulated through ships that are traveling in international waters. And so they don't have to even count that fuel. And that fuel is actually 100 times dirtier than diesel, Mm. um, all of the bunker fuel that's being used. And then when you look at um, aircraft fuel, I mean, they're flying these fucking aircraft around just in pointless missions and patrols 24-7. And let's just look at a single flight of a B-52 bomber. There are 80 of these planes flying needlessly, randomly all the time, just on these pointless missions to maintain mission readiness, right? Mm -hmm. A typical mission for a B-52 bomber is 15 hours. And just check out this statistic. Okay, so the the average U.S. driver burns close to 500 gallons of fuel per year, which is crazy because Americans drive more than anyone else on Earth. Like It's already ridiculously unsustainable, our country. But when you compare... 
an average U.S. driver to a B-52 bomber, you would have to drive basically for like seven years straight just Mm -hmm. to match one mission of a B-52 bomber flying Mm -hmm. around for a couple hours in the air. So that Mm -hmm. just gives you like some insight of just how insane that is. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, and then you're looking at fuel use from DOD facilities. You mentioned the bases around the world. They just count domestic bases. They don't count international (laughs) bases when they're, (laughs) when they're quantifying their own fuel consumption. Uh So just imagine, I mean, how many installations are just burning fuel, all of the the infrastructure, all of the the missions, all of the munitions that are used um, just with missions, just with practice rounds. We're not even talking about war, right? Mm -hmm. And then then you look at uh, the obvious nature, going back to Gaza, what is the environmental impact of just war, warfare, Mm -hmm. um, bombs, bullets, all of those. And then, you know, obviously then we get more kind of abstract and we look at proxy wars, proxy forces, um, dictatorships that are propped up and only basically only exist because of U.S. power. Look at an institution like NATO. Mm -hmm. Um, You look at just the structure of imperialism and then you, you understand that it necessitates that fossil fuel infrastructure and that fossil fuel domination around the world. So there are so <laughs> many layers to what <laughs> is happening here. And yeah. it's it's mind-blowing because it's like you literally can't quantify this. Like you you don't quantify, you know, blowing up like like what happened in Yemen. I mean, the US would just like wipe its hands clean of that, even though they were supplying all the means and the military mm-hmm. intelligence for Saudi Arabia to, to facilitate what was doing in Yemen. When you're blowing up gas depots and water lines and all of that. I mean, that's all the carbon captured and then obvi- the obvious rebuilding um, that goes into something like that. And we're not even talking about, we haven't even talked about military industry and the supply chain, which is all of the raw mm-hmm. materials needed to build the weapons, ship the weapons, and all of the industry that isn't even included in what the military's calculations are of their own um, their own data of, of oil purchasing. So it's massive, Patrick. Yeah. 